Hello, I'm Sensei Alex Kakuyo. The title of today's talk is Reflections on the Jeffrey Dahmer Documentary. Before we get into that, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you'll be notified when I post talks in the future. If you wouldn't mind hitting the like button, that'd be great too. Before we get into today's talk, I have a bit of a confession to make. The title is a bit misleading. I'll be reflecting on the existence of the Jeffrey Dahmer documentary. However, I haven't actually watched it myself. I have no intention of watching it. In fact, every time an ad for it pops up on my computer screen, I close the window. And I'll be speaking about the doctrinal reasons from a Buddhist perspective that I do that. But before we go down that road, I first want to explain who Jeffrey Dahmer was and why he's famous. Jeffrey Dahmer was a serial killer who was active in the 70s, 80s, and early 90s. He killed and mutilated the bodies of 17 men and boys before being arrested, and he was eventually beaten to death in prison. Recently, Netflix decided to make a documentary about his life. The families of his victims have requested that people not watch the documentary because they feel like Netflix is profiting from their pain. Frankly, I feel like that in and of itself would be a good enough reason to renounce this particular form of media. However, I feel there's a very good Buddhist case to be made from a doctrinal perspective as well. And I would like to explore that because I feel like this is something we should keep in mind any time this sort of situation comes up. Now, in order to understand where I'm coming from, we need to look at the teachings of someone called Vasu Bandhu, who was the promulgator of the Yogacara school of Buddhism, also known as the Mind Only School. And what we're taught in Yogacara Buddhism is that our entire reality is made out of Dharma. So, Dharma is simply an aspect of reality. My robe is a Dharma, my glasses are a Dharma, my physical body, your physical body, all dharmas. However, dharma isn't just the physical world, it's also the mental world. It's the sounds we hear, the sensations when we rub our skin against the floor. Everything we experience in this world is a dharma. Now, what Buddha did 2,600 years ago and what Vasubandhu did in Yogacara Buddhism is that they categorize the dharmas of our reality into undefiled and defiled aspects. That is, dharmas that are in keeping with our Buddha nature, that are healthy, wholesome, and life-affirming, versus dharmas that are not in keeping with our Buddha nature, that are destructive and thus should be avoided. Examples of undefiled dharmas would be generosity, equanimity, wisdom, Examples of defiled dharmas would be greed, anger, and ignorance. Now, as Buddhists, one of our primary objectives through our practice to, is to end suffering for ourselves and others. And the way we do that is by studying the various dharmas in our reality, determining which ones are undefiled and which ones are defiled. We cultivate the undefiled dharmas of generosity, wisdom, equanimity, etc. And we renounce or minimize the defiled dharmas like greed, anger, and ignorance. So we have to ask ourselves when documentaries like this one about Jeffrey Dahmer come up, which category do they fall into? Are they defiled dharmas? Are they destructive? Or are they undefiled dharmas which will benefit us and the people around us. Now, before we answer that question, I want to explain why this is so important. Because if we understand Vasubandhu's teaching, we understand that there's no real separation between our mind, our body, and the environment around us. They all create and co-create one another. 
This is why when we go to a Buddhist temple, we spend so much time cleaning. Because a clean and orderly environment creates a clean and orderly mind. This is why oftentimes, as part of our Buddhist practice, we'll be offerings at the altar. Because when we burn incense and light candles for the Buddha, when we practice giving with our physical bodies, that generosity that we're acting out affects our minds. We act out generosity with our bodies, and thus our minds become more generous. And thus we are more generous in our environment when we come in contact with other people. Body, mind, environment, all one thing. So what are we inviting into our environment? What are we inviting into our minds, into our bodies? When we watch documentaries like this one, which I'm told is very graphic, both in how Jeffrey Dahmer committed his murders and the aftermath of those murders. What are we doing to ourselves? What are we cultivating? Now, I'm not suggesting that everyone who watches the documentary is a serial killer or a bad person. What I am suggesting is that we need to be careful about these things. We need to watch our minds. I don't think it's a coincidence that we as a society are becoming more anxious and more angry and more violent while our media becomes more anxious, more angry, and more violent. We are what we take in. Scientists tell us we are what we eat. Buddhists say that we are what we eat, what we smell, what we see, what we taste, what we touch, what we hear, what we think. So I would just like to ask the question of Netflix and of anyone else who'd like to answer, why are we celebrating the worst and the darkest parts of our humanity? And what does that do to us as individuals? Now, I'll leave you to ponder on that, but I'll also make a suggestion. What if instead of watching a documentary about a serial killer victimizing people, we add up all the time that we would spend in front of our screens watching this show, and instead, we spend that time cultivating healthy, life-affirming dharmas. We could engage in religious practice, reading sutras, chanting, bowing, meditating, giving offerings at our altar. Or, if we've already done that for the day, we can use the time we would spend watching a documentary to engage with our family and friends. To spend time working in our gardens. To helping out in our community. What if we took this time and instead of celebrating a serial killer who brought so much pain and suffering to the world, we instead celebrated the best parts of ourselves, using our time and our energy to move ourselves and the people around us that much closer to enlightenment. Amitabha.